Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So, Microsoft has rolled out Edge version 140, which is now the latest release. And the update started rolling out late last week on Friday in my part of the world. So, I'm sure by now, if you have been using Edge over the weekend, the browser would have been updated already. Now, this is what I would consider to be quite a big update for Microsoft Edge. But first of all, just focusing on the security fixes that have rolled out for the open source Chromium project. And these would be last week's weekly security fixes that were made available. So the Chromium security update includes six security fixes. One of those is patching a high severity, which is used after free in the V8 JavaScript engine. And then the Five remaining are all inappropriate implementation vulnerabilities and there were no critical vulnerabilities that had to be patched or any zero days, which is always a nice move. And then over and above the Chromium security fixes, we also get one edge specific security fix for the browser itself. So those are a quick roundup of the security patches that have rolled out with version 1.4.0. Now, just to focus on the new features that have been made available. First of all, we get a new scareware blocker. Now, this isn't actually that new. It started rolling out in preview in Edge version 133. And now it seems that scareware blocker has been made available now by default as a so-called stable feature. And Microsoft says Scareware Blocker is your local AI-powered shield designed to protect you and your users from Scareware attacks. Now, to get to the feature, we would head to our settings, Privacy Search and Services, click on Security, and here you'll see Scareware Blocker. Allow Microsoft to use AI to detect potential tech scams. And just take note that Microsoft says feature availability and functionality may vary by device type, hardware configuration, region, and platform. And Scareware Blocker is enabled by default, as you can see, only on devices with more than two gigabytes of RAM and at least five processor cores. Devices that don't meet these minimum system requirements may require manual activation or may not support this feature. So just take note of that. So this is something I have posted on previously. So if you want more in-depth info regarding how and what it does just do a search accordingly on the channel and obviously if it is on by default at least you have the option to turn that off if you don't want to be using AI to detect potential tech scams and then there's also a new tab groups autosave that's rolling out with Microsoft saying Edge now automatically saves tab groups making it easier than ever for you to pick up where you left off and just to demonstrate, if I add tab to new group, there we go. And Microsoft says, organized tab groups are preserved and ready to revisit any time, whether you switch tasks or restart the browser. So if I close the browser down and I restart it, there's my tab group automatically saved. And then I can re-enable that if I so wish. And I think if you are using tab groups, that may be a move in the right direction. And with version 140, the next so-called new feature is that Edge now supports HTTPS first mode, which according to Microsoft will upgrade HTTP connections to HTTPS when possible. And Microsoft says if a site doesn't support HTTPS, Microsoft Edge shows a warning to highlight the security risk. This appears only for public sites, not private ones or manually entered HTTP URLs according to Microsoft. And if you want to enable, and if you want to enable this feature, you can just head back to your settings, head back once again to privacy search and services, security, and yeah, you'll see just above Scareware Blocker, which we spoke about just now. Automatically switch to more secure connections HTTPS and it's off by default and you can toggle that on and off and you've got alerts about insecure public sites default or alerts for about insecure public and private sites for some strange reason that is not on default for me but nonetheless that's the new HTTPS first mode and I think I'm just going to leave that on 
And that's another new feature that's been rolling out very gradually. And I have spoken about this in previous uh, videos, but Microsoft seems to think, but Microsoft seems to be listing this as a new feature where there is an enhancement to Edge updates with Microsoft saying it is introducing an improvement to the settings and more menu, also known as the ellipsis menu, main menu or three dotted menu, which makes it easier for you to discover when a browser update is available. And I've never seen any prompt. So that is most probably rolling out very gradually because that's not the first time I've spoken about that with an Edge update. And then the next Microsoft says it's improved the navigation to extension surfaces. And more specifically, Microsoft mentions to improve visibility and discoverability, Edge is introducing two navigation improvements for extensions. First, if a user has at least one enabled extension, like I do, the puzzle icon is persistent on the toolbar. And then the second improvement regarding extensions, Microsoft says, from the settings and more menu, the extensions option allows you to reach the extensions page where you can manage your extensions and edge add-ons directly. But just take note, this is on a controlled feature rollout, so I'm not seeing that option. So that is rolling out officially controlled according to Microsoft. And then there is under the hood performance improvement where the collect cookies dialog is rewritten to improve page responsiveness. So that's taking place under the hood. And then for the next one, if we head into our settings, profiles, sync, we head down to the bottom of the page. Microsoft says, for users having problems syncing browsing data across other signed in devices, they can now reset data from the Microsoft servers via the Edge settings. This option should only be used if the synced data is available on one of the user's devices or if they want to delete all synced data from the servers. And this could be quite handy in regards to privacy. And then there are a couple of so-called AR features that have rolled out and I'm just going to mention these quickly because I have basically posted on all of these in previous videos where Edge now supports GPT-5 as an option for Copilot Smart Mode, if you are using um, Smart Mode. You can also now create a podcast with Copilot in Edge. And you can also create images and videos by typing your query. In the address bar, and Edge will generate the media using DAL E3 OpenAI's Sora. So that's just a quick mention of those AR features that are rolling out. I have posted on those previously. And then two changes I've spotted that Microsoft does not mention in the release notes for this update. And the first is, I've noticed that the white flash issue has been removed, where, as an example, if I close Edge, and up until this update, if I used to open Edge, there was a white flash when the browser launched. That's now been removed and has been replaced with more of a marker opaque, almost a black screen. I'll do that one more time. There we go. So basically the white's been replaced with a black. But nonetheless, I think that does look a little bit better than that blinding flash when you used to launch the browser. And also, if we open a new window, it does the same. The white flash has been removed. So I think that's a nice move, but just take note, I'm only noticing this change on my Windows 11 device and not my Windows 10 with this update. So this could be a controlled rollout, removing the white flash issue. And then the last one to mention for this video is if we head back into our settings and we head to the new AR innovations, which was added recently, and we turn on enable Copilot mode. We now get a couple of extra options. Copilot new tab page where you have the option now to have that default setting enabled. So when you open so when you open up a new tab page, it'll enter copilot mode. Or you can toggle that off. You can still be using copilot mode, but now when you toggle that on, it opens up a new tab page and you can still see. And something else is you can see when Copilot mode is enabled now, 
we get that theming, that Copilot theming now that's applied to the browser edges. And if you open up that new tab page, you can see the same applies. And I have posted on most of this previously, so I'm just doing a very quick recap for the purpose of this video. And then if we head to Copilot mode preferences, you are able to turn off the theme or turn it back on, which I think is nice. There's, that's an option at least. And then yeah, focus on new tab page. When opening a new tab, keyboard focus is applied to the page instead of the address bar. So with this turned on, if I open up Copilot mode, keyboard focus is here in the search. And if I turn that off, keyboard focus is here in the address bar. And I have posted on that previously. So as mentioned, just a quick, quick recap. So at least we've got a couple of options now with this Copilot mode. And I've also noticed that with Copilot mode turned on now, the Copilot from the address bar, which was which used to be here to the left hand side of the address bar, with Copilot mode now enabled, has been moved here to where Copilot normally is when Copilot mode is turned off. So that drop down resizable quick fly out menu is basically taking the place of Copilot, that sidebar Copilot when you enable um, Copilot mode. So we can see if I turn that off. The so-called normal sidebar and side panel copilot is enabled so a whole lot of different options rolling out microsoft didn't mention this in the release notes so um just bringing it to your attention in case you would be interested so guys as i said with edge version 140 quite a lot going on and that's the latest release which rolled out late on friday in my part of the world last week so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one